All right. Good afternoon, Dr. Yeah. Michelle. Afternoon. Um, how are you doing today? Oh, very good. Thank you. My first question is about um, atrial fibrillation in today's world. It's a hot topic with multiple etiologists coming out as, you know, possible factors. And with different therapies nowadays, old and new, um, in the field of EP, uh, afib ablation has, you know, become a prominent treatment. And we want to see, know what, you, what your thoughts are in, about afib ablation and where he sees in the future in the field of EP. Well, I am an atriologist, <laughs> which means that basically I do afib ablation. So you have... You know, I've been doing it for 15 years. Uh, I've seen a lot of changes. We went from thinking you couldn't even consider ablating atrial fibrillation. It seemed too complicated and uh, just something out of the realm of possibility for ablation to doing it every day. And I do it all day long, every day. So um, in the past 15 years, we've seen a huge change. A lot of that came from recognition that at least paroxysmal AFib comes from pulmonary veins. And by isolating the pulmonary veins, we have a pretty good success rate with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Where a lot of the focus and energy is going in the future is figuring out ways to prevent persistent AFib, and that may be drugs, um, ablative therapy, um, lifestyle modifications turn out to be important as um, you know the world gets bigger. Uh, I mean, yeah. as uh, patient yeah. size gets bigger, yeah. uh, AFib becomes more of a problem. And so combating that and all the things that go along with obesity. Um, second, uh, the tools we have are getting better. But the one thing that's very clear is our knowledge has lagged behind. So for persistent atrial fibrillation, there's a lot of arguments about what the basic mechanisms are, but there's no consensus. And that's among the world's experts. So uh, persistent atrial fibrillation, we're still ablating in the dark a little bit. I think everyone agrees that pulmonary vein isolation is the way to go. And so uh, trying to develop tools and technology that make permanent pulmonary vein isolation is a very important thing. But it's not going to treat all of the patients with persistent AFib because they need additional ablation. And that comes from a knowledge gap. You know. We could create tools to do good ablation, make nice lesions, but if we don't know where to put them or how much to do, we're really, and this is where we are. So we don't really, uh, so there's, from a fellow perspective, um, I think you've got very interesting things going on in atrial fibrillation. One is we need to find out, we need the scientists to figure out what these mechanisms are. Yeah. Uh, and then we need the proceduralists to figure out ways to do this cheaper, better, lower complication rates, higher success. Our success rate's pretty good in the short run for paroxysmal AFib, somewhere around 80% we find in the last few years um, when we do very careful pulmonary vein isolation. Um, but it's much lower for persistent AFib. So uh, I think it's one of these things where it's such a standard treatment for AFib now, I don't think it's ever gonna go away. Uh, and t unless they develop the magic bullet drug, which is not really on the horizon. So I think it's here to stay. And for fellows thinking about EP, uh, I think it's just going to become more and more common. We're going to need more and more people trained to do this, to do it well. Uh, so.